Greetings, Flushy Mammals, and welcome back to another Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker build video. Today, we're actually going to be putting together the ultimate Jin Churiki themed build. This one here was a ton of fun to put together, and I really hope you guys enjoy it as well. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's go! Starting things off with the weapon, I actually decided to go with the claws. Now, this fits the build pretty damn well because Yugito, the Two Tails Jinchuriki, actually uses claws herself. So I decided to use the claws above all of the other weapons for the attack type. What makes this even better is that the combos for the claws are actually really, really good and they work with pretty much every jutsu that the attack type has. On top of that, the hitboxes on them are just insane. Like you can actually hit just like off to the side of somebody and it'll still actually count as a hit. On top of that, air combos with the claws are just freaking insane. So the claws are very, very good with combos and comboing into jutsus. For the ninja tool, I actually decided to go with fire release bullet, the scientific ninja tool. Now, this one here is a little bit of a strange one, but let me explain really quick on how this one fits with the build. Basically, we're just gonna pretend that there's no scientific ninja tool and it's just a third jutsu. Now, this jutsu fire release bullet is actually meant to represent Roshi with the with the fireballs and the magma release, and that's pretty much why I have it there. On top of that, it's also very fun to use, and it just has very good combos. Um, if you're using it near a wall, you can actually get uh, multiple um, wall splat combos with it. So basically, you can wall splat someone by doing your basic combo into Rasengan, that'll wall splat, and then you can go into the wall splat, and then keep comboing, and then throw this out, and that'll be another wall splat. And then you can just keep comboing after that. So honestly, I feel like the fire release bullet is just very good overall for combos and getting wall splat combos and maximizing damage potential. So this one I really, really like, especially near walls on specific maps. Moving on. For the top skill, I actually say I go with Spiteful Spirit. Now, this is actually going to make a little bit more sense once we get into the Jutsus, but basically, what Spiteful Spirit does is basically, well, it just lengthens the amount of time the enemies suffer from status elements. So basically, when you remove substitutions, when you lock them out of Jutsus, when you uh, light them on fire and they have burn damage, when you slow them down, stuff like that. Basically, when you use anything that affects the enemy status wise the effect will last longer which is why i decided to go with this one because it just it fits with the combo potential of the build maximizing damage output as well so uh yeah moving on to the next skill for the bottom skill i actually decided to go with ready and resolute this skill actually just decreases the amount of damage that you take from enemy ninjutsu so let's say you get hit by a fireball jutsu or majestic destroyer flame you're just going to take less damage than you normally would have and i feel like this one here is just better for surviving because people in Shinobi Striker love to throw out ninjutsus all over the place. It doesn't matter what it is, people are using it. And decreasing the amount of damage is just generally useful in my opinion. There's really nothing more to say here. It'll just help you stay alive longer in the long run. Now for the accessory skill. Now this one solely depends on your playstyle and what you want to do as a player. However, the skill that I went for is Renewed Focus. All this does is makes it so that way your close range attacks, so your melee attacks, break enemy guards easier. So if you're ever in one of those battle situations where you and the opponent just kind of take turns blocking each other's strings, you're going to end up breaking their guard a lot easier, even if they start reflecting you. So you're going to be able to get better combos. And as you know, when you break someone's guard, they are not allowed to sub until the substitution comes back, which is just generally very, very useful, especially when we're trying to maximize our damage output with this build. Generally, I really like this one, but you can go with whatever accessory skill you see fit. For the first ninjutsu, I decided to go with something simple, the Rasengan. Now, this is the jutsu of Naruto Uzumaki, the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. That's pretty much it. It's generally a very good one for combos as well. I really like this one because if you do it near a wall, you can actually get some wall splat combos going with this one. It only has a 13 second cooldown. It's also very good for lunging away when you have a flag or something like that. It's just generally useful for modes like that when you're just trying to get somewhere faster. 
Um, it'll also um, reduce the movement speed of your opponent when you hit them with it. So again, status ailment duration, so it'll be slower for a longer period of time. This one here is just, just an overall general all around good jutsu to have on here. Plus it fits with the theme of the build of Jinchurikis since this is Naruto's jutsu, his main jutsu, the Rasengan. And he is Ninetales Jinchuriki, so decided to go with Rasengan above all else. However, you can also go with the Rasen Shuriken if you really want to. But I do just recommend using Rasengan as you're going to be getting a ton of wall splat combos. The status ailment is definitely worthwhile when you are playing modes like uh, Capture the Flag or Barrier Battle. For the second ninjutsu, I decided to go with Octopus Hug. Now, this one's also kind of like a no-brainer because there's only really two Jinchurikis that are in the attack type category. That's Naruto and Killer B. And Killer B being the Eight Tails Jinchuriki, he actually has a couple more uh, Jinchuriki-like moves that we can use here that actually fit the build. Here we're actually going with Octopus Hug just because it is just overall a very, very good jutsu in my opinion. And it's a little bit cheesy, admittedly, but it is generally a good jutsu. It does a pretty decent amount of damage. On top of that, uh, they can't sub when you use it. And for a limited time when they are trying to get back up on their feet, you can actually hit them with pretty much anything and it'll deal like double the amount of damage that normally would have. So normally people would actually like to use their jutsus right after this, but I do recommend waiting a little bit, just like a split second after you are done using the jutsu, and then you can actually get double the combo damage. And on top of that, because you are comboing the opponent when they're out of this jutsu, you can actually hit them with the Rasengan right after you're done comboing them, and you're going to be getting more damage because of the wall splat combos that come out of the Rasengan. Generally, this combos very well with most attack type uh, jutsu, and it's just overall a very good jutsu to have, and it fits the build. So yeah, I decided to put Octopus Hug. Moving on to the substitution. For the substitution jutsu, you can really go with whichever substitution jutsu you want. However, I decided to go with Shadow Clone Jutsu for two main reasons. Firstly, when you sub, the opponent is no longer locked onto you when you do it, so generally just a good thing overall. And Shadow Clone Jutsu is actually a 25 second cooldown jutsu, whereas most other clone jutsus are 30 seconds. If you really want the lower cooldowns, you can go with high speed movement or the normal log substitution. You can go with whichever substitution you want, but I decided to go with Shadow Clone Jutsu for those two reasons. It has a faster cooldown than the other clone jutsus, and it also breaks the lock on from your opponents. So uh, yeah. For the ultimate jutsu, what else would I go with but the eight tails chakra mode? Now this one here is basically, if we boil it down, it's basically just the Jinchuriki version of the eight inner gates or the seven heavenly breaths. Basically when you activate it, it will automatically recover all of your health. It'll boost your max health. It'll boost your ninjutsu damage as well. So, the, so when you are in this, you're actually doing more damage with your ninjutsu, which as we already discussed earlier, when you are using the octopus hug, you can actually get a ton of damage as is already and on top of that with all of the different uh, wall splat combos that we can do with this build this is pretty damn busted you can pretty much wipe an entire team uh, pretty damn easily um, it also increases your defense and all that good stuff as well you can also activate it a second time so you can hit up on the d-pad a second time to do a spin attack which will actually cancel out your entire ultimate jutsu but if you are really desperate and there's a lot of people surrounding you, you can just activate that and it'll get all those people off of you. It's very good for controlling points on base battle and even barrier battle. I don't really recommend this one as much as far as just randomly throwing it out there. You kind of just want to use this one to maximize your damage output on the enemy team. So that way it'll give your team a little bit more leeway to do what they need to do. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, remember to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. It's been casual.